In today's news industry, we see a lot of sensationalized media headlines filled with scary news reports and confusing information. Unfortunately, viewers at home are left with few options when it comes to finding trustworthy news. But there are scientific sources we can trust. The Population Division of the United Nations predicts that the planet's population will exceed 9 billion by the year 2050. But the demand for food, fuel and fiber will increase by 60%. So in 40 years time, as a global population, we're going to have about 9 billion people. And at the moment, we're at about 7 billion people. So it's 25 to 30 percent more people. But in 40 years time, people who live in, for example, China and India and Africa are going to have more income per person. So more money per person. And as people have more income, they want to buy more meat, more milk and more eggs. So more and more people with more and more income means we actually need 60% more food to feed everybody in 40 years time, even though we only have 25 to 30% more people in the global population. For the ag industry, that means that we need to use the resources that we have available to optimize food production for the future. In other words, we need to make the most possible food from the resources that are currently available so that people in the future will be able to have a healthy diet that meets their nutrient needs. Scientists around the world will agree. We are approaching a critical time when increasing human population will challenge the ability of the agricultural industry to feed everyone. But some are advocating major changes within this complex system. So there are some groups out there who would say that we can feed everybody if we just don't eat milk and meat and eggs. So if we directly eat simply corn and soy, we can feed the world. And from a practical point of view, that isn't going to work. And from a personal choice point of view, that isn't going to work. If we have the option to eat milk and meat and eggs at a low economic cost, at a low environmental cost, those foods have a high nutritional value and are particularly good for us. Now the other supposition is that on any patch of land, regardless of where or how, we can grow any crop. And unfortunately, it simply isn't true. We grow corn in Iowa, for example, because Iowa is really good for growing corn. And we raise beef in Montana because, again, that's suited for beef. So it isn't true to assume that on any patch of land we could just grow corn or artichokes or grapes and so therefore convert all, the, all of the world's pasture land into growing alternative food for humans or even for animals. If we were to make those changes, uh, it would have a great economic and ecological damage because uh, one, we would uh, lose a lot of our potential food production that we currently have, and two, to convert rangeland or pasture land uh, is really not feasible. Uh, it would be very costly. The uh, ecological damage would be such that we'd have wind and soil erosion. Uh, it just would not be healthy for the environment to release all that carbon that's currently stored in the soil uh, back into the atmosphere. So there are many ecological problems with making that change. As the world's population grows, one of the world's most important sources of nutrient-dense food for humans will be provided through animal agriculture. Livestock are essential to convert grasses and foodstuffs that are indigestible by humans to high-quality animal proteins for human diets. So at the moment, we use most of our available farmland that can grow things like corn or soy or beets for example. But where animal agriculture plays a huge part is that through cattle, for example, we can put them onto land where we can't grow anything else. So it's great for pasture and grass, but it can't grow corn or soy or grapes or artichokes. And those cattle convert that pasture into high quality, safe, affordable milk and meat every single day. So they do us this fabulous service. Ruminant animals have the unique capability of being able to digest fibrous feeds that have no nutritional value for humans. And they're, only, they're the only practical way to really harvest much of the uh, grasslands in this country. 
the bacteria in the rumen can break down the fiber and convert it to energy, and they can also use the protein in that grass and convert that to protein. So we get the two major ingredients, uh, energy and protein, that are needed for growth or milk production, and consequently, we can take resources that have no nutritional value for humans and convert them to a very nutritionist product in either meat or milk. Livestock production is important to the economic and social sustainability of both developed and developing countries. So why are consumers so out of touch with this important industry? So compared to 40 years ago, 80 years ago, 100 years ago, back then most of us worked in agriculture. Nowadays it's less than 2% of the total U.S. population work in and on farms. What that means is generally we don't understand what farmers and ranchers do every single day. And it is a complex system. It isn't just as simple as get up, milk the cows, feed the cows, get some milk. It's highly complex. Over the last hundred years, we've gone through a transition in this country where many people understood how their food was produced because they were raised in a rural or agricultural environment where they observed it on a daily basis. Now most consumers go to the grocery store and pick the food off the shelf and really don't understand very much about what has happened prior to its arrival to that grocery store shelf. It's critical for consumers to really get the facts about how food is produced and the various interactions between different types of food to really make wise choices and to not let the media or other sources influence us without understanding the true impact of their choices. There are reports in the media that the production of feed for animals is directly competing with human food production. But what does the science show us? Well, many of the feeds that we use for animal agriculture are not edible by humans. Even the corn that we feed to livestock is not the same as the sweet corn or the popcorn that we typically would consume as humans. So it has to be understood that we have byproduct feeds that are used by livestock as a major component of their diets. And many of these come from uh, the production of human foods. For example, if we're going to produce sugar, uh, sugar beets are broken down to where we get about half sugar and half byproducts that the only good disposal mode method is to feed them uh, to livestock. If we look at uh, grain production such as wheat where we make flour, uh, we get wheat nids and wheat bran that are best used by livestock because we normally don't eat those in our bread or pastries. If we uh, look at orange juice, uh, we have orange pulp and orange rind that's available to livestock. The way to make good utilization of all these products is to actually feed them to livestock to produce a nutritious uh, protein product that complements the other ingredients and then uh, not have to dispose of these byproducts in landfills or by burning. There's often a supposition that to cattle, for example, we simply feed corn and soy. But we really don't. We feed many, many feeds from the human food industry, the human fiber industry, the grain industry that we can't use for anything else. So, for example, if we're making a, a product like apple slices or beer or bread, there are waste products from that grain or that fruit or that vegetable that aren't eaten by us, but they can be fed safely to animals. And if we do that, then we need less pasture, less corn, less soy, less land to feed the same amount of animals. The whole concept that we shouldn't use cereal grains for uh, animal feed because they should all go to human food is really a misunderstanding or misrepresentation of the facts. We need to be able to use cereal grains as a small part of some animal diets and they're a very efficient way of converting the energy in those cereal grains to high quality protein sources that actually complement the cereal grains that are grown in other parts of the world and that lower income people maybe use as a major portion of their diet. So it helps the low income people as well as the people in more developed countries to have access to the full range of food products to really develop a balanced diet. There is no doubt that the global livestock industry faces a considerable challenge in the next 50 years to produce more food to feed a growing global population. 
while the media continues to feed consumers with sensationalized and often inaccurate reports about food production. So the thing that surprised me most was the power that we have as consumers. We can make a huge impact on how food is raised, which is wonderful and um, which is how it should be, but only if, if we have the facts and the information. If we try to make decisions on a kind of touchy-feely basis of, well, I feel like this should be better because that isn't always the right thing for the planet, for the economics and for us as well. So we've got to have that science there. Consumers need to know global animal agriculture provides safe, affordable, nutrient-dense foods that support human health and well-being. Scientifically accurate, trustworthy information is available to those truly interested in understanding the difference between feed and food. For the Council for Agricultural Science and Technology, I'm Rick Blackwell. Please visit cast-science.org. This program is made possible in part by The American Farm Bureau is the nation's largest general farm organization with the mission of working through grassroots organizations to enhance and strengthen the lives of rural Americans and build strong, prosperous agricultural communities. Learn more at fb.org. Elanco is a global innovation-driven company that delivers products to improve animal health, well-being, and productivity. For more information, visit www.elanco.com. Monsanto is a sustainable agriculture company which delivers agricultural products that support the world's farmers, large and small, so they may produce more from their land while conserving more of our world's natural resources.